This is me, Undead Viking. I'm here to talk to you about this game right here. It is called Battle Cruisers, and like, not be easy to see. Um, this is not going to come in this giant box. This is the prototype that I was sent, and it is not actually Village Port either. But this is a new game coming out by TMG. The uh, Kickstarter is actually live right now, and they are totally kicking butt with it. But I really wanted them to send me this game because uh, Seth Jaffe kind of sold me on it. And plus, it is by one of my favorite designers, Philip Duberry. I don't usually talk too much about designers. I'm not a guy that like says, oh, I just gotta get every game by this dude or whatever, or that woman or whatever. I think those games are amazing. Um, basically because, uh, you know, for the most part, um, designers <laughs> have eventually like let me down. You know, like I've gotten a game by them that I haven't enjoyed. But um, with, there are very few exceptions to that rule, and one of the exceptions is Philip Duberry. Philip Duberry was, um, I don't think you can see it. Actually, maybe you can. Can you see my no, it's too far up. Revolution is right there. Uh, Philip DeBerry came out with that game back in 2009. It was one of like the very first board games I ever purchased from Steve Jackson Games, and I still play that game. It is amazing, and I love it. And uh, and ever since then, I have kind of had a a uh, a, 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 a I've, I've kind of followed him, if you will. Um, he and uh, Bruno Faiduti are like the two designers that I'm, I, I've like 95 percent of what everything that they've had their hands in I've, I've really enjoyed so um that being said let me show you how to play battle cruisers this game is so easy to play but it has so much depth i can't wait to tell you about it so i'm going to show you how to play it shouldn't take long at all and then we'll come back here i'll tell you exactly why i dig this game and then we will go forward from there all right cool all right, this is Battle Cruisers, and this is one of the easiest games in the world to teach. If you are uh, introducing this to your gaming group, it'll take about five minutes to tell them how to play. You could take this to a convention and have four strangers jump into a game, and you'd all be up and running in the exact same amount of time. Each person will get a player mat, one victory point, and the same deck of cards. If you have, um, with with uh, depending on the number of people that you have, uh, you will have, like, if you have the full five players, you'll have uh, eight cards, and four players, seven, and so on and so forth. But, um, and if you're wondering, like, which cards you should, you should use, there's tons and tons and tons of cards, um, but there are you know, different setups that you can use um, as far as the different uh, uh, cards that you everybody will have. Um, you can just do it randomly. You can do whatever you want. Um, I've just set up with the, the basic set, the introductory set, if you will. And each person will get the exact same eight cards. Uh, they will shuffle the cards up, but they will place one card in their discard pile here face down. They don't know which card it is, but it's very easy to figure out which that card is because you know the cards already has. And then uh, you will have one card in your recovery zone. Now, it is important to note that you will know which card is in your is in your discard spot. And, and a lot of times, you'll never get that card back. Once you discard a card, you maybe won't ever get those back out of your discard pile unless there's a certain and power that can drag those back, but your opponents won't know what card is in your discard pile, which is important. Everything else is open knowledge, however. So as the game begins, each person, what they will do is they will go ahead and look through the cards. Remember, each person has the exact same cards, you know, that they were handed at the beginning of the game. However, um, you know, not everybody is going to know what cards you have access to. And then each person is going to select one of the cards that they have. They're going to pick it. They're going to put it face down on their player mat like so. And at the same time, everybody's going to flip it over and reveal. And when you reveal the card, what happens is that you are going to resolve the cards in numerical fashion, starting with the lowest possible card and working your way up. And each person then will have some sort of effect that is going to either affect themselves or affect somebody else or collect victory points or what have you. And the game is going to continue until either all, everybody's, everybody, one person has been destroyed, and you get destroyed by losing cards. Like, basically, if you can't draw cards, if you, you know, uh, if you run out of cards, then you're out of the game. Or somebody gets to 15 victory points, and then, obviously, the little victory points are in here. Now, remember, this is a prototype, so just keep that in mind as I show you how the game is played. So, I'm just going to randomly pick cards for each one of these players. I'm not going to, uh, you know, so <laughs> this might not be the, the best technical uh 
turn if you ever but I mean so but I'll get more into strategy here in just a little bit and so then everybody flips their cards over so we just go boom 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 like so and we have this is good actually I randomly picked the exact same number so what we do then is that we start with one and work our way up now two people actually pick the same card and that's important to note because when two people pick the exact same card what happens is there is a clash and so what happens is you look at the bottom of the card and you see here is clashes discard this card or one card from your hand discarding cards is never good because of the fact that you have to basically um, lose a hit point if you will. Now, if they if it had worked, what it says is discard one card. It can be any of your cards that you have in your hand, and you would gain four victory points. But in this case, the people that discard this have to discard a card anyway, but they're not going to get any victory points. So they're probably going to be upset with the other players that they had to do that. And so they turn that over, and they get upset, and they have to discard a card. They pick a card in their hand, and they go ahead and put that in their discard pile like so. And then we go up, and then this person would say, I have laser cannons, and each opponent discards a card. And so you can say, ha ha ha, I has to discard another card. You won't get any victory points, but that's good though. You're, you're lessening their things. And if you clash with somebody, it would have been discarding your card. And the last person is an escape pod. And so we see here, it says gain a victory point. So this person would take a victory point like so. And then it says, if you have no cards in your hand, return up to three cards of your choice from your discard pile back to your hand. This is one of those cards that you hold on to to play at the last possible uh, chance because of the fact that uh, if you're down to one card and you play this card, then you're going to get cards back in your hand and you won't be in danger of losing. But, and then, you notice the Clash says discard this card. So then each person's done that. What they're going to do is they're going to take the card that was in the recovery zone over here. Everybody takes the card that's in the recovery zone, they put it back into their hand, and then they move whatever card they played, unless it was discarded, of course, over into their recovery zone. Of course, I did not put that one there like so. And so that way you get the card that you just played and you put it back in your hand and then the play continues just like we did. So each person once again will lay down a card and then people will either slowly gain victory points or lose cards and then you know eventually one person will either have the 15 victory points they need to win or they will have destroyed all their opponents. If you get down to one card you do technically turn your your uh, player sheet over to the red alert phase which means that basically you're down to that one card if you will. And other than that, I mean, that's 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 all there is to it. You, you might be saying, well, that doesn't seem like much of a game there on the Viking. But no, there is a ton of game here. Basically because you're always going to be trying to outthink the other people. And this is one of those games where I, I think you're going to play that card. But I think that you think that I'm going to play that card. So you're not going to play that card because you don't want to clash with me. But then... I think that you think that you think that I think and that and all that stuff. And so then you got to, you know, try to figure out what is the best card to be played during that moment because of what you need to do. But also you got to figure out what's the best card to play that you pretty sure nobody else is going to play as well. So there you go. That is how you play Battle Cruisers. I'll talk more about the strategy and everything else I like about the game uh, here in my conclusion. All right, all things considered, that was a pretty quick uh, little uh, gameplay portion of this video. I'm sure you're used to, if you've watched my videos before, you're used to them being longer, so you're welcome. But anyway, but that's the cool thing about this game is that it doesn't take very long to teach at all. You're diving into the game almost like as soon as you crack open the box, you're going to be able to play the game. Now, I touched on the fact that there are a ton of cards here. There are 45 cards in the deck, and I think they might be adding more through the, uh, the, the expansions and what have you or something to the Kickstarter. I might be wrong, so... Don't quote me on that. But from Spy Drone uh, to Time Warp, I mean, there are 45 different cards with different abilities that are going to be affecting the game. Now, you can play with any set of cards that you want. They have tons of, like, setups that they've created that you can definitely use. But some of the most fun games of this I've played are just saying, everybody, let's just, these are the eight cards. Those are the eight cards we're playing with. Let's play. And trying to turn in uh, a strategy, trying to turn in a, a process of using those eight cards to kind of work together, if you will, and, and, and make a... Uh, and make a feasible uh, 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 tactic out of that 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 conglomeration. Now, that being said, like I said, in the rules that I have, there's I think there's about. 
20 different variants, if you will. There's even variants with more cards. There's variants with making the game last longer, if you want to. This doesn't have to be a little micro game that takes about 10 minutes to play. But this is exactly the kind of game that I like that is of this genre, this this kind of weird, multiple, simultaneously playing card game that, that this type of game seems to be prevalent right now, and, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. Mostly because this is a lunch game for me. This is a game that I take with me to uh, my job, and when I go downstairs to have my sandwich with my buddies, um, this is something that we all play together because it is, is it's a one-handed game. I can have my sandwich in one hand, I can have the cards in my other, and then we can just go ahead and have fun and kind of trash talk and have a good time while we talk about our day and play this game three or four times in the 45 minutes to an hour uh, that we have uh, for our lunch, you know, and and this is a social game. This is an atmosphere game. This is, I mean, it might not totally, you know, like buy into the theme, but the cards at least are science fiction. Yes, I'm pretty sure you could transplant these cards and make it medieval. You could make it, uh, you know, dinosaurs. You could make it pirates if you wanted to. But it very much works in the eminent domain world, uh, a game that I really like, of course, um, and I like it as a, a sister game uh, of that uh, genre, that collection, if you will. So there you go. Um, if you like quick little fun little uh, car games that make you think and make you try to outthink your opponents, I definitely suggest that you should pick up Battle Cruisers. The game is amazing. Um, if you have any questions about the game, please uh, ask those. I'll answer those to the best of my ability. And as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.